Hi everyone, Seth Alchemist here. Today I'm going to share with you the initiation process using alchemy. Alchemy is an art. It's the art of transmutation. It's the art of transforming lead into gold. It's a tool that will help you find the Philosopher's Stone, your own Philosopher's Stone. This is a tool of initiation. It could be either metallurgical or spiritual. Alchemy have helped me throughout my journey and I want to share it with you. It is a complicated science, but more than a science, it is an art that help you understand how to undo, how to dissolve, how to be reborn again. Before I start, I want to remind you that every initiative process will most likely go through three phases. Three, after all, is the number of mastery. We have material, spiritual, and divine. We have mind, body, soul. We have the past, present, future. We have space, time, matter. Three in numerology represents creation, birth, and mastery. Jesus died at age 33, and he accomplished everything in only three years. So every time we talk about initiation and mastery using any tool. We have always three aspects or three elements that keep showing up all the time. In sacred geometry, this is usually represented by a triangle or another form called the triketra or the triskelion. These forms, these sacred geometry forms have been adopted by many cultures around the world. In Christianity, we have the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and in Norse mythology, we have Mother, Maiden and Chrome. And if you want to use the language of the birds or the green language, which I'm gonna address more in upcoming videos, the word trespass is composed of two elements. We have tres, tres like three. In Latin, tres is three, like Hermes tres magistus, who is the founder and creator of alchemy. So trespass means that if you want to go beyond, if you want to breach, if you want to go to the other horizon, you have to trespass the limits. You have to trespass your own limits. So number three is even found in linguistics and it represents the limits you need to overcome in order to become the master. In alchemy, we see this represented by three phases or three elements that alchemists call corpus animus spiritus. Alchemy, as I mentioned, is the art of transmutation, but it is also the art of purification. The goal of alchemy is to reach or accomplish the philosopher's stone through the process of purification. The main goal of the alchemist was always to transform lead into gold. The goal was to purify that metal until it becomes gold. That can work from a metallurgical perspective and also from a spiritual perspective. Our souls work the same. How do we transform them from what we are right now into gold? Transmuting gold itself is the last step to accomplishing the final Philosopher's Stone. Because once you transmute gold, it becomes light itself. Transmuting gold into light or your soul into light will eventually requires that the metal or your soul to be as light as possible. And I mean both meanings of the word light. Light as in illuminating and light from a weight perspective. The goal was to transmute gold until it becomes light itself. It can absorb light and dark. It lets both light and dark pass through. This is the goal of the alchemist on a spiritual level as well. All of the sages and all of the saints and the wise people that have lived before that have changed the world that's what they were. Because once you 
attain that level, you can embody the spiritual realm, the universe, the spirit within the physical body, within this physical reality. Some people that you may know of as Jesus Christ or Buddha or others, that's what they did. They were able to embody the spirit within the physical reality using their own bodies, the philosopher's stone. But in order for them to reach that level, in order for you to reach that level, you have to transmute your soul to the point that it becomes light itself. It means that it's as thin and as light as possible, that matter can pierce through it. So you become physical and spiritual equally at the same time. Alchemy exists in different formats, metallurgical, spiritual, medicinal. In witchcraft, a lot of witches, what they do is basically alchemy for rituals and for potions, mixing herbs and plants. That is alchemy. That's plant alchemy, it's medicinal alchemy. But alchemy mainly consists in removing all of the unnecessary layers or the nasty layers that are holding you down. The things in your life that don't serve your growth, that don't serve your spiritual mastery. So alchemy help you shed these layers and get rid of them in order to purify yourself and become who you truly are. This purification process in metallurgical alchemy requires the alchemist to take the metal and dissolve it by oxidizing it. And this oxidization will dissolve the material and remove as much layers from it as possible until it becomes its pure essence. And the more you rinse and repeat this process, you do it over and over and over, you're gonna remove as many layers from this metal as possible and of course you're gonna mix the metal with other materials and you're gonna do your alchemical work until this metal becomes gold gold itself if you dissolve it because gold in alchemy is represented by the sun by light itself in french gold is or and or in hebrew is or which means light. Gold is the closest material to light. And it is said in alchemy that if you try to transmute gold and dissolve it to become even more pure than what it is, then gold becomes light. And here, when alchemists say light, we have to make sure about what kind of light we are talking about. Light, after all, is just the light that reflects in our life, in our physical reality that we see every single day. And that light comes from the sun. And the sun is a ball of fire. So it's the fire element. So when we say light, we mean the fire element. And if you remove this light, before this light existed that we have for 12 hours of the day, there is darkness. And darkness is the foundation of the universe. Dark and darkness is the pillars of everything you see around you. It's the architectural blueprints of the universe. The light that projects in order for us to see this physical reality is misunderstood and it has been manipulated by many dogmas and religions to control human beings. So transmuting gold results in gold becoming light, which means it is so pure that it lets both light and dark pierce through. That's the ultimate goal of the alchemists. That's the ultimate philosopher's stone. Because once you become like that, you become everything. And that's the oneness that many people tend to talk about. If you think about the origin of the word dissolve and where it comes from, if you have a problem, what do you do? you try to find a solution. You try to dissolve the problem so you can find a solution. So the word solution comes from dissolving. So we have alchemy here again. So alchemy helps you dissolve and find solutions 
and remove all the layers that you don't need in your life and existence. So let's dissect the three main elements of alchemy from a metallurgical perspective. Because when we say alchemy, we usually work with metals, but it is all connected and all intertwined with our souls. As above, so below, as within, so without. Everything is connected and nothing is random. So we have corpus animus spiritus. Corpus, which is the body, is represented by salt. Animus is represented by sulfur. And spiritus is represented by mercury. Salt represents the body. It is the representation of our physical reality. It is fixed, it is rigid and it represents everything that's physical. And if we want to make a connection with the Hebrew letters, it is also connected to the letter Aleph. Then we have Animus. Animus is represented by Sulfur. Sulfur is that masculine energy. It's the energy that animates us. Animus. It's that energy that gives us ambition, that gives us power and strength and will. It's the masculine divine energy is the agitating force uh, that pushes you to accomplish and do things in life. In the Hebrew alphabet, it is represented by the letter Shin. And the third element, which is Spiritus, spirit or soul, represented by Mercury. This is the divine feminine energy. It's the soul. This energy is volatile. It's subtle. We have salt, which is fixed. Mercury is volatile fixing the volatile and volatiling the fix. Finding that balance is also a very important principle of alchemy. Why do you think people call alcohol the spirit? For example, if we take wine, wine is the spirit that comes from the grapes, from fermenting the grapes and working them until you get their essence, their soul, and you drink the soul of that uh, fruit or of, of the grapes. That's why alcohol is spirit. Mercury or spiritus is the most divine part of ourselves. It represents the unknown, the opposite of the physical reality that we see all around us, that we touch and feel. Mercury or spiritus is the counterpart. It's the volatile. It's the soul that defines and makes us who we truly are. And it also represents the divine feminine the energy of creation. And the connection to the Hebrew alphabet here, this spiritus is represented by the letter Mem, which is a round letter. It's like a circle. And in sacred geometry, the circle is a feminine energy. The square is masculine energy. So if we take these three elements, corpus, animus, spiritus, and correlate them with the Hebrew alphabet, we get Aleph, Mem, Shin, which in the Sefer Yetzirah, in the Kabbalah, are very important letters used for creation by God. There are seven metals that alchemists work with and they correspond to seven planets. These metals are lead, iron, tin, copper, mercury, silver, and gold. The planets that correspond to these metals are also seven. We have Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, the Moon, and the Sun. Gold is the closest metal to light, and that's why it's represented by the Sun. Silver, however, is represented by the Moon. So gold is a volatile metal, is very subtle, compared to lead, for example, which is represented by Saturn. It's heavy and it's more of a fixed metal. In the language of the birds, or the green language, light, the word light, is also light. So we have the light that illuminates. If you're very light from a quantity perspective, then you're gonna illuminate, you're gonna become light. And this correlates with ancient Egypt. In ancient Egypt, after the person passes away, after they die, 
Anubis, the guardian of the underworld, has the duty to weigh the heart of the person who passed. And if their heart is not as light as a feather, and this is metaphorical, if it's not as light as a feather, then they're not gonna move on to the next level of existence and they will go to hell or to the underworld. That means that to move on or to go to this heaven or to become the master, and this is what I think the meaning is, is to become who you truly are and to uncover the secrets and the wisdom that makes you the ultimate magus that requires your heart and yourself and your corpus and spiritus to be as light as a feather. And once you become so light, you illuminate, you let every matter pass through you. Darkness passes through you, light passes through you, and that's how you become one with everything. And again, this has nothing to do with dark being bad or light being good. Dark and light complement each other. They're both very necessary for existence. So in order to understand this concept properly, you need to understand that the truth of the matter is that light is dark and dark is light. If anything, another interpretation or explanation of the Philosopher's Stone is to not reach the light is to let the darkness in if you can wrap your head around that because the moment you let the darkness in or embrace your darkness as i say in many of my other videos and i have a book about how to embrace your darkness you can check it out at sephalchemist.com the more you embrace that darkness or you let the darkness in the more you will understand how existence work, the more you will uncover the secrets of the universe, the more you will be perfectly balanced. If you go to the universe out there, or in the spirit realm, there is no light. There is just darkness. This light that you see here from the candles, again, it's fire. We misunderstand light with fire. This light we call light is just what fire projects for us to see. So the core element of existence is the dark. And the more we understand the dark and we, the more we embrace it, the more we embody it, we will understand that's who we are and that's where we come from. So remember these three aspects of alchemy, corpus, animus, and spiritus. But how can this work in our lives? How can we apply this knowledge to to our daily life. Well, think about your behaviors, your environment, the people you encounter every day, your peers, your family, your job, your career, your relationships. What are they doing? How are they benefiting you? Are they dragging you down? Are they holding you back from becoming who you truly are? Know thyself. Transformation requires dissolving. It requires shedding those layers. And the only way to shed them is to initiate the process of dissolving. You have to initiate that process. You choose to do it by letting what doesn't serve your growth. You have to let it go. You have to destroy it. You have to throw it in the garbage. And that's how you die, metaphorically speaking. In tarot, that's represented by the death card, Major Arcana, death card number 13. That's how you die, so the new you emerges from the ashes, just like a phoenix. I hope this helps. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.